If you are a 90s and early 2000s football fan, you're one of the really blessed ones. Because these days, football seems to be losing its identity and everything that made it fun to watch and wildly enjoyable. These days, the game's gone from skills and tricks to straight up mechanical. The fact here is that football's greatest era was the 90s and early 2000s. Before we get into it, if you'd like more videos like this, subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified of our latest videos. Now, back to the video. Back then, when you went to the stadium or turned on your TV to watch a live game, you were guaranteed to see great display of skills, fearless tackles, drama, showboating, and everything that made the game beautiful. First, the sport now seems to be over-reliant on getting every single bit right. Matches are stopped every 10 minutes to consult the VAR for red cards or penalties or any of that gibberish off size. Don't get us wrong, VAR is certainly revolutionary and is changing the game's landscape, but in most cases, it drains the emotion out of the game. With VAR, fans can no longer celebrate a goal when it hits the back of the net because there's an ongoing check for every goal. Players always have to look out for offside calls when celebrating goals. Defenders can no longer fully commit themselves to tackles because, at the slightest touch, VAR interferes and referees give a penalty or a red card. These days, everybody wants to be too careful with their tackles and you can't even blame them because things we've seen called as fouls these days is quite ridiculous. For example, it is a player as much as taps an opposition player, he gets a penalty. You could watch the replay again and again and see there's very minimal contact. Penalty still given. In the late 90s and 2000s, football had the feel good factor about it. The rules were pretty basic and everyone went about doing fairly easily. These days, VAR has opened another Pandora box of raw interpretation. Only this time, there are too many rules to fit into a single refereeing decision. We made a video about the 10 biggest VAR blunders in football. Go check it out and see how surprising that one gets. If the football authority believes introducing VAR could help football be better, the least they could do is make sure it can at least solve one problem perfectly. But instead, fans cannot really focus on enjoying the game like they did in the 90s and 2000s. They constantly have to think of VAR too. Apparently, VAR is not the only things that's removed the glitter out of football. Social media has too. Social media these days has also driven players to insane levels of dependence on social acceptance. Nowadays, players simply want to run and get praise on social media. When things aren't going well for players, the effects of social media trolls become even more glaring. We saw what the media did to Harry Maguire when he wasn't at his best and how affected he was by what the fans were saying about him online. We seem to have all forgotten that these players aren't machines, but have emotions too. Fans now seem to want instant success so they can have some banter material on social media. In the 90s and 2000s, things were a little easier. There was no social media drama, flashy cars, trolls, or any of that added stuff. Players only focused on playing football and entertaining the fans Nothing else mattered. Even defenders are not exempt. We'll admit that there are more technical defenders in this generation than when they were back then. And yes, seeing defenders figure out easier ways to defend is a relief for most clubs. But that's just about it. If you ask defenders today, the evolution of defense laws has stifled them so much. In the 90s and 2000s, you had defenders like Palio Maldini, Nemja Vidic, Gennaro Gazzo, Martin Kuon, and Carlos Puon, who would fearlessly go for last ditch tackles, make insane blocks, and when it matters most, take one for the team. Everyone looked forward to the next insane block, miraculous tackle, and goal line clearance that have adrenaline coast through any player's vein. These days, the laws of the game have stifled defenders. The things we see being called fouls today are quite stunning, to be honest. 
defenders can almost not fully elevate themselves for the fear of committing penalties. An example of this is in PK's handball against Russia in the 2018 World Cup. If defenders are punished for the most marginal fouls, it is only a matter of time before they run back to their shells. They tell defenders to jump with their hands up today. Tell them not to get too close to defenders tomorrow. What would they do tomorrow? Tell them not to engage in sly tackles? It may be so ridiculous to say, but with the trajectory of the game these days, it wouldn't really be surprising. The 90s and early 2000s was a great balancing era and players were free to commit themselves fully to the game. These days, not too much. Let's not even talk about the staggering transfer fees. Teams constantly raise the bar of how much they can spend in a season. Chelsea spent over £200 million in the window transfer. Window and the Premier League alone had a gross spend of £815 million during the January 2023 transfer window was the largest ever, 90% higher than the previous record, which was £430 million, and that was in 2018. Small teams have become talent factories and feeder clubs for the bigger teams and have zero ambition as the financial gap between clubs continues to increase. For just £11 million, Thierry Henry moved from Juventus to Arsenal in 1999, while in 2004, Chelsea made a record signing of Didier Drogba for £24 million. Even Cristiano Ronaldo went to Real Madrid for £80 million. These days, even a bang average players go nothing less than £60 million. Anthony for over £80 million, Richard Arderson for £60 million, that's not to say these players are bad, but the sheer magnitude of their transfer fees means they almost never live up to their full potential. With transfer fees rising every day, small teams can no longer keep up. Their stars are stolen away with huge transfer fees that they simply can't refuse. Also, attacking players no longer want to stay on their feet in the box. One small nibble and they flop to the floor, holding their feet and rolling all around because they know VAR is chief at blowing things out of proportion. Everything lurks worse in slow-mo. The strikers know it's so they make a meal of it. Defenders know it too so they don't indulge in tackles in the penalty area. In the 90s and 2000s, things were pretty simpler. Penalties were almost always what the referee defends fit, and these are actual fouls with actual contact for actual penalties. The strict rules for penalties in the 2000s made penalties a rare find for teams, but these days it's pretty easy to come by. Another thing that's pretty easy to come by these days is stats. Footballers these days are super engrossed in statistics and aren't really looking to entertain the fans anymore. In the 90s and 2000s, players didn't care about the number of assists they had or goals they scored. They simply wanted to help their team be better and play better. You have players like old Gunnar Solska who was okay with a bench roll if it meant he'd help out the team. Vidic would rather lose his nose than concede a goal. Ronaldinho, who played to entertain the fans at all times. And Zidane Zidane, who never cared about the assists he made of the goals, he scored as long as he gets to enjoy just football. The late 90s and 2000s was an era where the sport benefited from the refinement they enjoyed in the 80s. Nostalgia aside, the 2000s represented a time when the footballers just had the better players. There was this inevitability about football then, from long shots to magnificent chips, players could do anything really. It was all bright till the sports science came into the football and realised that the probability of scoring from inside the box was much higher. In the 2010s, Ronaldo and Messi dominated the game. There was almost no one that could stand toe to toe with them. While you could argue that both players are just ridiculously good, you could probably agree that most players could no longer stand out in positions anymore. In the 2000s, players like Peter Schmeichel and Buffoon held it down in goal. 
In defence, Stam, Maldini, Vidic, Cavaraglio, Puyo and Robert Carlos were all capable of turning just any game around. In the midfield, Zidane Zidane, Paul Scholes, Lampard, Gerard, Andrade Inzanza, Xavi, Marcalelli and Totti all had tendency and flair that made them just impeccable to behold. Don't let us get started with attack. Looking through the decade, you had Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Terry Henry, Dennis Burkamp, Van Nistelrooy, Alan Shearer, Samuel Eto'o, to name just a few players. What these players lacked in ingeniality, they had in character, tenacity and grit. Before every game, teams could look forward to how well these players would perform, but these days, the teams are far greater than the player. You'd rarely see personal duels like Ying Park Sung versus Andrea Piero as football drifts away from man marking. And players today are not to fault for it. The game has become much more calculated in the expense of rare, unexpected moments. Regardless of how football evolves, we're glad that we enjoyed the magical inevitability of the 2000s. For that, the 2000s will be fondly remembered as the greatest era for football for us. You're free to disagree with us. Go ahead and make your case in the comment section below. We're open to our minds being changed. While you do that, check out how Sucker has become a global superstar in this video and subscribe so you get the first ring once we have a new video. We'll catch you next time. Peace out.